America's weirdest serial killer, Ed Gain, the Plainfield Butcher. Once again, we're going to take on the darker aspect of human psychology. We've already discussed the most prolific serial killer in Jack the Ripper, the most beastly Ted Bundy, and now we're about to enter the world of maybe the most strangest ever to hold a spot in the infamous serial killer hall, Ed Gain. No one really shocked the world as much as this guy. Just ask the police who discovered his horror home, the one who never succumbed to a nervous breakdown. Anyway, you're in for a shockingly terrifying surprise if you have not heard of him. For today's video, we will be talking about Ed Gain, a strangest and craziest serial killer in American history. But before we go any further, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and smash that like button for more quality videos you can certainly get from others. We compile videos and do the research just for you. So once again, we can assume that on an awful scale, Mr. Gain was not similar to anyone like Ted Bundy, nor was he as brutal as Jack the Ripper or as disdainful as H.H. Holmes. If anything, the guy was twisted throughout recognition to an incomprehensible degree. He was no doubt mentally insane. Edward Theodore Gain, or commonly known as Ed Gain, was born August 27, 1906, Plainfield, Wisconsin, an American serial killer whose horrific crimes gained worldwide popularity and inspired countless books and horror movies. Ed Gain is indeed one of the most infamous American serial killers, also known as Plainfield Butcher, owing to the extreme nature of his crimes and the state of his home when he was arrested. From 1946 to 1957, after the death of his mother, Gain was a convicted murderer and body snatcher working in Plainfield, leaving him alone and in a psychotic mental condition. Gain suffered a tough upbringing childhood. His father was an alcoholic and his mother was hostile and abusive to him verbally. Gain apparently idolized her, a fact which apparently troubled his older brother, who, in Gain's presence, sometimes challenged her. In 1944, during a fire near the family farm in Plainfield, his brother died mysteriously. While Gain reported his brother disappearing to the police, when they arrived, he was able to lead them directly to the burned body. Despite of the circumstances, the death of his brother was ruled an accident amidst bruises found on his head. Gain was the sole survivor of his family after his mother died. He was a social outcast in Plainfield, Wisconsin, who lived on a farm and made a living out of being a handyman. After the town's hardware store owner Bernice Worden mysteriously disappeared in 1957, Gain attracted the attention of the police due to he was the last person supposedly seen at her store. However, Bernice Worden's son told police that Ed Gain had been in the store the evening before the disappearance of his mother and that he would go back for a gallon of antifreeze the next morning. The last receipt written by Worden the morning she disappeared was a sales slip for a gallon of antifreeze. At evening on the same day, Gain was arrested at a West Plainfield grocery store and his property was searched by the Washara Country Sheriff's Department. In a shed on Gain's farm, they were able to discover Warden's headless corpse hung upside down by her legs with a crossbar on her ankles and ropes on her wrist. The torso was dressed like a deer outside. She was shot with a .22 caliber rifle and after her death, she was decapitated. Authorities searched his house after he was imprisoned and not only uncovered Warden's decapitated body, but also a museum of terrifying horrors you could not barely comprehend was presented in his house. Within Gain's farmhouse was a set of human body parts and for a stomach burning fact, he used skulls as bedposts, garbage baskets and chair seats made out of human flesh, nine salted vulvas in a shoebox, leggings made of leg skin, a nipple belt, face mask made of female skin, including a pair of lips on a window shade, drawstring, and a lampshade made from the skin of a human face. At the state crime laboratory, these objects were photographed and then decently disposed of. It includes Mary Hogan's decapitated body, a tavern operator who disappeared in 1954, was also discovered on Gain's property. Gain acknowledged that the two women, both of whom reportedly resembled his mother, were killed but pleaded not guilty because of insanity. The majority of the body parts scattered in his house came from stealing female corpses from nearby cemeteries Gain revealed. His aim? 
In order to crawl back into the shell of his mother, he made a bodysuit made of human flesh that literally crawled into his skin. He only admitted to killing two women, but he was a body snatcher who had an obsession with his deceased mother, Augusta. Ed Gain wasn't actually a serial killer. Gain admitted that nine graves had been robbed from nearby cemeteries and directed investigators to their sites. The test graves were exhumed because the authorities were unsure as to whether the slight Gain was able to dig up a grave during a single evening with one hand. They were discovered as mentioned by Gain. One casket was unoccupied, one casket Gain had refused to open when he lost his pry bar, but much of the body was missing from the third grave, but Gain had returned rings and some pieces of the body, thus obviously trying to verify Gain's confession. A famous line of Gain, when I see a pretty girl walking down the street, I think two things. One part wants to be real nice and sweet, and other part wonders what her hand would look like on a stick. But there is no proof on this speculation that this is his statement. But this is such strangeness and brutality left its mark on Plainfield, which would never be pain again. In a psychiatric ward in Wisconsin, Gain was declared legally insane and institutionalized. The discoveries of the demented compulsions of Gain forever altered America and influenced a number of horror movies, a few of which have achieved its icon status. Many books and movies were influenced by Gain's actions, including three of the most popular horror thriller movies ever made, Psycho 1960. Directed by Alfred Hitchcock and based on the iconic book by Robert Bloch, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974 and The Silence of the Lambs in 1991. Psycho For several demented horror characters who kill, Glane's haunting infatuation with his mother has now become a staple, taking Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho in 1960 as a prime example. Bates, however, was not taken directly from Gain, but from the imagination of the novelist Robert Bloch instead. Even there was a creepy connection, just 35 miles from where Gain lived, Bloch was actually writing his book. It was just before he had finished his novel that the murders of Gain had come to light. Bloch was surprised by how closely the behavior and encouragement of Bates resembled Gain's. Texas Chainsaw Massacre the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, quite loosely influenced by Gain, took the real-life body snatcher's fascination with human skin and used it to establish its leather-faced character, which hid behind face masks made from human flesh. While the murderer family of the movie had no association with Gain, the disturbed man's other conspicuous inspiration include body parts used as home decoration, the hint of cannibalism and the mummified carcass of the matriarch of the family sitting in the building. The Silence of the Lambs In The Silence of the Lambs, the serial assassin Buffalo Bill not only find roots in Gain, but also from other prominent serial assassins such as Ted Bundy, Gary Hidnick, and Ed Kemper. A direct nod to Gain was Buffalo Bill's fascination with female human flesh and making suits out of the skin of his victims. Prior to his iconic horror movies, Gain was discovered insane by the courts, diagnosed with insanity and an extreme Oedipus complex mental illness. On July 26, 1984, at the age of 77, he died of respiratory failure secondary to lung cancer at the Mendota Mental Health Institute in Madison, Wisconsin. He was buried in an unmarked grave on his family's farm. Over the years, at Plainfield Cemetery, Souvenir hunters chipped bits from his gravestone before the stone itself was stolen in 2000. It was found near Seattle in June 2001 and was stored in Washara Country Sheriff's Department storage. The tomb itself is unmarked now, though not unknown beside his family in the Plainfield Cemetery. Does Ed Gain really a serial killer? Quite gruesome, isn't it? Which part of his story terrified or disgusted you? Comment your thoughts down below. We would like to know your conclusions. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up so we can upload related videos. If you're an abundant true serial crime stand, remain seated as the next video is starting.